Okay, I'm start recording, okay. Let me see. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I'm recording. Okay, good. Uh, if you can, please do turn on the, the video. Okay, I'd like to make sure everybody is here. And uh, you don't have to turn on the mic unless you want to talk. Okay, but please turn on the video if you can. But I know some maybe because due to the limitation of the equipment, maybe you, you can't, but it's fine. But if you can, please turn it on. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, oh, I see somebody is talking. I don't have my webcam with me. That's fine. If you don't have it, that's fine. I, I think it's okay. Okay, but if you have, please just turn it on. Okay. Uh, I posted the notes for the for last Friday's class. We start talking about the convection, right? Heat convection. Heat convection is very important uh, for industry application. Most of the you know, most of the heat exchanger in industry, it's convection, okay? It very barely use conduction, unless, unless you have some micro scale, nano scale device, if you wanna uh, transfer heat, maybe some of the mechanism is conduction or radiation, but for the most of the industry application, if you wanna move heat, if you wanna remove heat, uh, we use convection heat transfer, okay? So most of the industri industrial heat exchanger. Um, okay, convection is important. So, so the equation, right? What is the equation? Hold on, let me double check see if there's anybody in the reading room. Okay, I think everybody's here. 20, I have 20 of you, okay, to today's class. Good, let me switch the screen. Okay. to my uh, draw board, okay. Okay, I guess not much, right? Uh, for, the, for the notes, last time we, we just introduced the equation, okay? We introduced the equation, then, uh, hold on, how to move my video screen, okay. Okay, I'm keep monitoring the, the, the wait room in case you guys join in, okay, then later time. Okay, here's the equation, right? Convection heat transfer, heat transfer rate, uh, watt, right, unit in watt, it's energy, form of energy, right? So Q equal to H, A, H is a convection heat transfer coefficient, A is, uh, A is what, A is uh, surface area. Right for the heat transfer, okay. Uh, the temperature gradient, temperature difference between the surface and the ambient that matters very important, okay. So uh, H A times T wall minus T ambient, okay. So this is the basically the, the equation for the convection, right? We we talk about an example on the the. The surface, right? Surface with cross flow. Okay. So one thing I wanna emphasize emphasize here. I did the last time, right? But I still want to emphasize here is the the key transfer coefficient H is not a strictly speaking is not a property of the fluid. Okay, it's not the prop a property. Well, well it, it, it totally changes due to the external conditions, okay? As I draw the here, you see, a surface, right? The velocity is parallel. I, I just arbitrarily draw the velocity parallel to the surface, okay? Obviously, the heat is removed by the flow, okay? So from the equation, you see how, okay, we can, we can obtain, we can, 
we can find a uh, heat transfer coefficient of this air uh, in, under this uh, condition, under this situation, right? However, imagine, what about the air, the flow is pointing toward the surface? Or maybe the flow is going away 45 degree, uh, leaving the surface. It's possible, right? This is just a, you know, whatever, whatever I draw down here is a very special case. You don't know the flow direction, actually. The flow could be, could be parallel, could be not, right? But imagine the flow, if the flow is 45 degree going above the surface, then you definitely, you have a different heat transfer. Do you agree? Right? Which one was better heat transfer? Parallel or like a 45 degree going up? In terms of removing the heat on the, from, the, from, the, from the wall. Which flow direction is better? It's, you can re remove more heat. Anybody? Educated guess? Uh, probably parallel. Yeah, I, 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 it's from, from, from common sense, right? If it's parallel to the surface, it seems like it moves the heat more efficiently. Is that right? Okay. So in that sense, you, you still, the two situations, 45 degree and a parallel. Okay, it's a two situation. You still use the same equation. Okay. So you say the parallel will remove more heat. So the Q is bigger for the parallel case. But the surface area is still the same. Come on, that's the surface, right? Temperature on the wall is still that the temperature on the wall. Ambient is still the temperature on that ambient. So in, in that sense, based on this equation, your H for the parallel case is greater than the H for the 45 degree case. Okay, so that, so that, that means the H is not a property. Come on, the property of a fluid, it's kind of like a, you have to be mostly consistent. You don't change by just changing the flow direction, right? Okay, so from, from, from that example, you know that actually H is something superimposed, like artificial, we created as an engineer, we created it. This is called Newton's law of cooling, right? So I guess, they, they couldn't figure out that actually a real property for the convection characteristics. But so they, they just forced one there. Okay. But, but, but I think that's a great thing, right? That's a good thing. That's engineering practice. I, I want you to remember this is good because as engineer, we, we, we don't care about the theory that much actually. Right? We, we, we want to produce, you know, we need to design, we need to make stuff. Okay. So, so we need to have equation better than no equation. You spend another hundred years to develop a beautiful, perfect theoretical equation, but it, it doesn't help us. Okay, that's the difference between engineering, engineer and the physicist or mathematician. Okay, keep in mind, you're an engineer. Your goal is to, to produce. <laughs> okay, so that's a good example of, you know, you created the equation, you're forcing the coefficient there. Okay, but we can, you know, for the engineering purpose, we can determine the age by measurement. Okay, if you are a mechanical engineering student in, in the next semester, you're probably gonna take my, uh, uh, maybe na later semester, in the senior year, you're gonna take the heat transfer lab, right? Heat flow lab. We, we, we do measurement for the heat transfer coefficients. Okay, that are very common, okay? So in, in some of the application, you probably need to measure it, okay? It's all different. All the situation maybe give you a different age. Okay, but for, for the measurement, it's not that difficult, right? If H is your unknown, think about design experiment. What, what, what do you need to do? What do you need to measure? You need to know everything else in this equation, right? In order to calculate H, okay? Area is not a problem, okay? Physical area, so what? You can surely measure it. The two temperatures is not a problem either. 
okay? The two temperature is not a problem either because the temperatures, you use thermistors, okay? Just measure temperature, okay? The problem might be the Q. How do you get the heat transfer rate? Okay, usually in this kind of situation, the wall is heated, right? So how, how is the wall is heated? Based on, it's heated from other sources. For example, from the, uh, maybe it's electrical heater. Okay, electrical heater. Just need to remember this, very important. The Q is a form of energy. Okay, look at the unit, watt, just the energy unit, right? Okay, so if you bury some electrical heaters inside the wall, okay, you start from electricity, right? You guys have had the circuit, circuits, right? Okay, how do you calculate the watt, the power? Volts times amps. Yeah, voltage times amps, right? Voltage times current. That's the energy generated by the electrical heater. Okay. Then, okay, it is watt, right? Voltage times amp is watt. Look at this, it's the same watt. Are these energy generated by the electrical heater 100% transfer into the form of heat? Probably not, theoretically, ideally, definitely not, right? You have losses, right, whatever. But, <clears throat> but the goal is, yeah, it's, it's about maybe 80, 90% of them transfer into the, convert into the heat, okay? That's electrical heater. That's what the heater is designed for, right? To convert electrical energy into heat, okay? If we, if we neglect the loss, yes, that's where the energy coming from. That's where the heat coming from. In that sense, come back to the, the question about the measurement of H. Now you know the Q, okay? It's just basically the electrical heater, voltage times current, maybe times the efficiency, right? There's the eta from zero to one, right? Then you have losses, right? Okay, so yeah, that's the fundamental of measuring H. Measuring H is very common, okay? It's a very common uh, procedure. You sometimes, as an engineer, we need to know, okay? But the only difficult part is for the measurement is, I think it's a Q, right? Just, you need to understand your whole system. Okay, where is the energy coming from? Okay, so that's a Q. All right, everybody agree on this? Right, you're clear, right? Okay. That's very important. Okay, any question, please just jump in, okay? Any question? Let's come back to the, the those video I sent you. Last time I don't have enough time to talk about those those video, right? And the type of the type of the convection heat transfer. Okay, so it's kind of in a hurry in the end of the class. Let, let's come back to take a look. Okay, I think the conceptually I want you to fully understand these, these heat transfer mechanism. Okay, so look at that table first. So it seems like uh, uh, we have several different types of heat trans convection heat transfer. First is the free convection. We also call it natural convection. Okay, that's the same thing. Natural convection and the free convection. And then we have a forced convection. So what's the difference between the free convection and the forced convection? I think I, I remember I mentioned this in the class, right? Last Friday. Anybody remember? The forced convection would be like a fan blowing that heat That's away right. from it, where the free okay. is just going wherever it wants to. Yeah, uh, I think without using the mechanical energy, right? The free convection, natural convection. You, you can use the heat, heat energy, okay? You can, uh, that, that video, the first video I sent it to you, basically the, 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 the container, okay? You heat it in the bottom, but in the center of the bottom of the container, right? So why the flow goes this direction? You heat it in the center, okay? So the air or whatever fluid become lighter, right? When you have, when, when it's hotter, right? So the middle part of the, 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 the fluid goes up. Okay, it goes up. Then feel the top 
region of the container. Then the top air, initial top air go, go down to, to fill the voids, right? That's a circulation. That two circulation has to be symmetric. Okay, so because of the heat, because of the become the, 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 the heated fluid become lighter, goes up, okay, it creates a natural circulation, okay, of the fluid. Okay, so it creates a movement of the fluid. Then when the fluid moves, it carries the heat away from the initial place. Okay, it's all about the movement. Okay, movement carries heat away. So that's the natural convection. Okay. But with, this is without using mechanical forces or something like that, right? You just heat it. Okay. So what else? We have a force convection, natural convection. Force convection, everybody knows, right? Just blow a fan to you. Yeah, this is a force the convection. Okay. Uh, then in the liquid, they have force convection and the boiling. Okay. Boiling and the condensation are, that's up here, right? Seems like a boiling, boiling water, it has a, a much, much bigger uh, heat transfer coefficient. You see, first of all, liquid is, has better heat transfer than the, than the air, right? From look at the table, okay? Liquid definitely is greater, okay? Then within the liquid, boiling is, boiling heat transfer is greater than the forced convection of the liquid, okay? So boiling is very efficient, okay? Because it involves the phase change. Okay, look at that video. Now you probably can see the video. At that time, the video is so slow, it's downloading. Okay, that video is, you know, is a modeling simulation result from the software we have, ANSYS Fluent. Okay, it simulates a surface boiling, right? You heat the surface and the, the bubble start to form. Okay, it start to form on the surface. Okay. If, if you, you can boil water you know, at home, you can see it. At the beginning, nothing happens. After a minute or two, you see the small bubbles start to create near the, near the surface, right? Bottom surface. Then you know that it, it starts to boil, okay? So when it starts to boil, something significantly happens. Near the surface, the liquid becomes vapor. It undergo a phase change, okay? You guys, most of you are, many of you are chemical engineers, right? Phase change, what do you need for the phase change? You need energy, right? A lot of them, okay? Yeah, I know, you're trying to answer, Jake. <laughs> Good, there's a lot of energy needed, so it actually it absorb a lot of heat, okay? Then the phase change starts. And the, the other good thing about the phase change is now it become bubble. After you absorb a huge amount of heat, it become bubble. You already transfer a lot of heat, right? Then those bubble moves. Bubble is lighter, much lighter. So what, what's the density difference between air and water? Anybody have an, any idea? SI unit, do you remember? What is the density of water in SI? What is the density of, of, of air in, in SI unit? Anybody remember? Don't? Okay, it's like 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter SI unit for water, 1,000. For air is like one, maybe 1 1.2, 1 1.3, it doesn't matter. It's just about one, right? One kilogram per cubic meter. Okay, so a thousand times. So air bubble, vapor bubble is much, much lighter than the liquid itself. So it definitely is go up, going up. It's going up much faster than the natural convection. Okay, it carries the heat first when it undergo phase change. Then you move the heat away much faster because of the movement of the bubble and the creates the movement of the air. Okay, so as long as you have movement, and actually, it's pretty violent when you look at the boiling water, okay? It's pretty violent movement in the water, right? When it's reached boiling point. So the heat transfer is very, very efficient. That's why the heat transfer rate for boiling and the condensation is like a 
much, much greater than the force to convection. Okay. So, is that clear conceptual wise for this? We didn't solve any problem yet, but they're good for the convection. Okay. So these are the type of the convections, natural convection, forced convection, and the boiling and the condensation. They are about the same, just opposite. Okay. Okay. So any questions, by the way? Good. Okay. Uh, this is the surface, okay? So I think I wanna, in the textbook, it talk about the internal heat transfer. Uh, the convection energy balance on a flow channel. You know, you guys, uh, you're gonna, if you're working in industry around here, you will deal with pipes a lot, right? Uh, all the flows that go through the pipes, circular pipe or channels, pipe, pipe mostly. Okay, so, so how about the, the heat transfer in the pipe system? For example, uh, the pipe is heated. Okay, for example, uh, example is uh, the heat exchanger. In the Sheldon tube heat exchanger, you have like a lot of pipes, right? One side is carry the, 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 the hot fluid, one side carry the cold fluid, the heat exchange between the hot and the cold fluids, right? So, it might be you have a pipe, okay? Let the flow flow inside the pipe. Okay, let me let me let me write it down. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to draw parallel. <laughs> Bear with me, okay? It doesn't matter. So, for example, this is a pipe. Okay, you have a flow, flowing and a flow out. Okay. Yeah, you haven't, many of you haven't get the, the fluid, fluid mechanics yet, right, for the class. So, yeah, in fluid mechanics, this is a very common situation, right? And the, your velocity will be, your um, flow rate should be the same, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you have a T wall. And uh, you have a T, let's say this time is not the T infinite, let's say T fluid. Okay, you know, you have heat transfer going into, that arrow is Q, okay? Going through the surface to the, to the fluid, right? So you heat, heat the wall, okay? What happened to the fluid, the temperature, T1, T2? T in, let's say T out. TI, okay, in the left, T TO in the right, in the outlet, inlet and outlet, right? Do you see the application? This is a very practical, very common situation, okay? People use this to, to, to heat the fluid. Or cool the fluid, opposite. If you, if you cool the wall, okay, then the heat goes out, right? Is that right? So in this case, you have a heat going into the fluid, into the pipe. Okay, what happened to the temperature in and out? It goes up. Temperature goes up, okay. T O is greater than T I, right? Obvious, that's a common sense, right? That's, that's how, how we heat the fluid. That's one of the way, common way in industry, how to heat the fluid, okay? So, so the energy balance here, okay? So the physical problem is this. So what is the energy balance? You have added energy into this piping, pipe system, right? Into this pipe, you add energy to that. Is that right? So your added energy is what? It's Q. How do you calculate the Q? It's up to you. You, you can calculate the Q by looking at the electrical heater, okay? It produces uh, it, it produce the total energy converted into the, the, the Q, to the heat, right? It's voltage current or voltage square divided by the resistance, okay, for the electrical heater, right? So you can calculate the total Q. Or in the measurement, you can even measure the wall temperature, 
Okay, what temperature changes, but that's difficult, right? You know what temperature changes also, okay? Although you heat it up to the surface, slightly change. And the fluid temperature inside the channel, inside the pipe also changes from left to the right, okay? So that's kind of difficult. You still can. You can put 10 sampling point to calculate the Q for every small area, small portion of the pipe, then add them together. That's a total Q. Okay, now you know how to calculate, right? It's Q equal to what? It's H A times T wall minus T fluid in here. But that's only for a portion because, because the T fluid changes along the flow direction. So it's kind of complicated, okay? But you have, if you know the electrical uh, property, electrical heater's property, so you, can, you should be able to calculate Q by looking at the voltage, current, and the resistance, okay? So that energy ad addition to this pipe will be equals, let's say we have a mass flow rate M dot. Anybody? You guys passed the thermal, right? <laughs> or, or did you? <laughs> or maybe pass through the online course like this. <laughs> Okay, anybody? Hmm? That's, that's not too difficult, come on. So for the flow, right, for the pipe, you receive energy, right? What is your initial energy? That's at the inlet, right? Without receiving any heat yet, right? When you go through the pipe, the water goes through the pipe, liquid goes through the pipe, you receive all kind of, all the energies from the electrical heater outside, right? Remember that equation? I put the mass flow rate here. You need a mass flow rate, right? Anybody? I really wanted you guys to tell me that. I, I know you had it. <laughs> Is it mass flow rate times okay. H2 minus H1? A mass flow rate times H2 minus H1. That's fine. That, that's actually correct. Totally correct. Okay. So did you have the form using temperature? Uh, CP delta T. That's right. CP. What is CP? Uh, constant with pressure. Uh, with, with constant pressure, right? Heat capacity, right? Okay, delta T, which minus which? The order matter, matters. Would be uh, T2 minus T1, or in this case, TO minus TI. Absolutely right, 100% right, okay? Be careful the direction, okay? Uh, be careful the order, out minus in, okay? Right, this is, this is, this is the equation, right? Everybody saw it before, right? It's not the first time you see it, okay? So that's the energy balance for the internal flow for the piping system, okay? So the energy you in and out, you receive, uh, energy you receive from the, from the surface of the pipe equals to the energy difference. Out energy, outlet energy minus inlet energy, okay? Okay, so that's a question keep, keep in mind. So from the previous class, we're talking about the surface. Surface heat transfer, you know, balance. The balance is also Q equal to Q, right? And that's the heat transfer through the surface, through the surface to the fluid, okay? But this, this one is not the heat, energy, uh, heat transfer through the surface to the fluid. It's from the inlet and outlet, the energy change. This is actually the energy balance equation. This is nothing new, okay? But be careful, in our class, you may be, you might need to calculate the Q based on the convection heat transfer, okay? It's supposed to be, I think it should be integration, H T wall minus T fluid dA. Okay. Don't be afraid of integration. Okay, you, you, 
You had a calculus, right? One, two, three, right? Piece of cake should, should be, right? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, but in reality, integration means what? Integration actually means summation. Right? Integration, the true meaning of integration in practical engineering application, it's basically summation. So what do you summate? What, what do you sum? What you do is you divide this It divided this pipe into small portions. Okay. If it's small enough, those small portions, if, if they are small enough, you can consider the temperature is constant on those small portions, right? Is that the philosophy of uh, calculus, right? You divide the domain into small elements. If the element is infinitely small, then you have just one temperature on the element, right? Surface temperature. So every element, you have a surface temperature. And in the every element, you also have a fluid temperature. T wall and the TF, right? So assume in the element is small. So in, in, in each element, the T wall is the same, then T fluid is the same, okay? So it becomes summation of H T W minus T fluid times delta A. All right? This is the practical equation, practical. The integration is the theoretical equation, right? What is delta A? The, cross, uh, the surface area of a small element, the pipe area, pipe wall surface area. Okay, so you add them together. That's a total heat transfer rate. Okay, so well, it's a pro approximation basically, you know. It, it, in reality, uh, no matter how small your element is, always the temperature TW is not constant, T fluid is not constant, slightly change, right? But if you divide it into smaller, a smaller element is small enough, that variation for the temperature will be, could be negligible, okay? Okay, so that's the practical way, summation, okay? In the theory is integration, okay? For our engineer, as an engineer, you don't have to have 100% correct on anything, okay? Everything you calculate that might be errors, okay? There will be errors everywhere, okay? Error is not scary. Don't know how to control the error and don't know what the error is, that's scary, okay? So as long as you know, basically in engineering application, 10% error is acceptable most of the case, okay? So, okay. So this is internal, do I have more time? Okay, I have a little bit more. Let's look at a couple, I think that's about the convection I wanna talk about in the theory, in the concept, concept, concept side, okay? And uh, let, me, let, me, let me give you a couple examples today and then maybe it's a part of tomorrow's class, okay? Or oh, not tomorrow. Uh, Okay, uh, Wednesday, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, let's look at the first example. Let's start from the easy to more difficult ones. Okay, I, I think I assigned a homework problem, all right? Two additional problems, 1.7 or 1.10, is that what I, yeah, yeah. 1.7 was rough. Yeah, 1.7 is a little rough, but for after today's class, you may be, maybe. Did you go over 1.7? Huh? Yeah, I, I, I want to let you, let you, uh, those problems I want you to uh, struggle a little bit, okay? We'll, we'll maybe tell you later. Or maybe I, uh, I tell you when, 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 when we have a, maybe a section to practice, uh, to, to talk about the homework problems, okay? So let, let's look at a little bit more simple problems. Uh, Example 1.2 in the textbook, page 17. Uh, 
1.7, okay. Uh, homework 1.7 is a pipe flow, right? If I remember right, it's just the pipe, right? Yes, it's a pipe flow. So after today's, I, I'm sure I, I did show you the energy balance here, right? After this, go back to take a look again, okay? So maybe it will help you to know how to solve them, okay? Good, sounds like some of you start the practice. I really like that, okay? Really like that. 1.2, example 1.2 on page uh, 30, uh, uh, page 17. That, that's very simple, right? Let's, let's read it. Uh, air at 20 degree blows over a hot plate 50 by 75, okay, centimeter, maintained at 250 degree. Okay, oh, that, 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 that's probably too simple for you, huh? <laughs> okay, let's say this is a surface. You have air blow over this surface, okay? Surface is what, 50 by 75, 50 centimeter, 75 centimeter, okay? Temperature T wall is 250 degrees Celsius, okay? The, Convection heat transfer coefficient of the air H is given 25 watt per meter square. Okay, and the, the calculate the heat transfer. Okay, if you have a paper, you can do it with me. So, what's your equation to use? I don't think you have many equations so far, right? Pick one is not that easy. So just like if we have a quiz or test or whatever, I, I want you to write down the equation before you fill in the numbers. Can you do that? Okay. The reason is I can give you points by you writing out the right equation. Okay. Pick a, a correct equation to me is the most important step most important step to solve a problem. Okay, right now it's picking equation is really not a problem to you. You have maybe three equations so far, okay? After you have 30 equations, maybe, maybe it will be a little bit of a challenge, right? To pick a correct equation to start with. So write down the equation correctly. I give, give, give points for, for doing that, okay? So that equation is just H A T wall minus T Infinite. Oh, okay. Do I, do we have the t temperature? Uh, air. Okay. T infinite temperature of air is twenty degree Celsius. Okay. So this is not a heating process. This is actually a cooling process, right? You want to cool cool the, the 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 hot surface. Okay. By blow cool air through it, right? Okay. So do we have everything? Q the heat transfer rate, how fast the air being, uh, the heat being removed equals to 25 watt per meter square times, what is the area? Be very, very careful on calculating those things. Okay, units. Okay, in the SI unit system, in during the calculation, nah, never use centimeter, uh, never use millimeter. Everything has to be meter, okay? I think this problem will give you 50 centimeter by 75 centimeter. During the calculation, you definitely have to convert into meter, okay? Very important. Those are the common mistakes students usually do, okay? 0.5 meter times 0.75 meter. Okay, that, that's the surface area. Okay, everybody? I think we have most of 20 of you here. Okay, I don't wanna see any of you making mistake by doing the, using the wrong units. Okay, just remember in those calculation SI unit, always meter. How about the English unit system? Always feet, okay. When you do pressure, you always want to say PSI or whatever. This is a common used value, right? Pressure PSI, but do the calculation, PSF, okay? 
very, very important. Then times temperature difference, right? Okay, I think the it's K in the in the in the, should be the K in the in the SI system. But use Celsius is safe when you calculating temperature difference. Okay, is that right? Okay, Celsius minus delta T is okay. Either use Celsius or Kelvin. Okay. Okay, so then it's just keying the calculator, right? Not a problem. 2,156 watt. Okay, the directly calculation from this definitely is a watt. Okay, and look at the textbook. It give you a 2.156 kilowatt. It's then no way to calculate the kilowatt directly. Okay, you can convert, of course. After you calculate the watt, convert into kilowatt, I, I don't care. Okay, I, I take either watt on kilowatt. But when do the calculation, I would prefer you directly calculate the value in terms of watt and the keeps unit on your paper, okay? These are the points I'm gonna take if you don't do. If you don't put the unit, how do I know it's watt or kilowatt, right? Okay, be careful, every calculation, Put the unit there, okay, and make make sure don't jump into kilowatt directly, okay. Then uh, it's equivalent to the BTU per hour, right? Seven three fifty six BTU per hour. If you prefer the English system, go do a conversion. Not a problem. Okay. So this is the extremely simple problem, right, for the calculation, but. Couple of things I want to make since this is the beginning of the semester still. So you probably are going to solve a lot of problems later. So, but I want to emphasize is first is the equation. Write it down the form of the equation or correct the form of the equation to earn some points first. You may be totally wrong in the answer eventually, but without, but if you present the correct equation, you still get some points. Okay, if you don't give me a full equation, but the answer is wrong, how do I give you points? Okay, then nothing right there. Okay, very important. The other thing is units. Be consistent with the unit. Meter is for the SI and the feet is for English systems. Okay, units, look at the equation. When you do the calculation, I prefer what I wrote here. I put all the units with the number, even during the calculation. Okay, let's avoid myself, prevent myself from making mistake. Okay, that's a good practice. When you become an engineer, when you start to work, when you do some calculation, do this, okay? Write down everything clearly with the unit, okay? Avoid, prevent yourself from making mistake. It's, it, now here, you make a mistake, so what? You minus five point for the, the quiz. Doesn't matter that much. But in the real life, if you have a job, if you do a, ma making a mistake on calculation, that, that could, be, could be a risk to <laughs> the job, right? Could be a career ending job, a mistake or something like that. You don't want that to happen. So make sure all the calculation is right. That's a very good habit to, to keep. Okay. Okay, it's 11.47. Okay, I'm going to talk about the example 1.4 um, plus another example. Uh, maybe since you want to know uh, homework 1.7, I will talk about 1.7 maybe next class. Okay, so we will finish the convection part Wednesday with a couple or two or three examples. Okay, be, be, be prepared. Okay. Any questions? I have two minutes. I can entertain any questions. Good, 100% clear. So I want you guys come into class, you know, and then learn the knowledge 100% before you leave the class, before, before the class end. That save you time, okay? With a little bit practice after class, maybe that, that, that's good to remember and learn the knowledge, okay? Okay, if you don't have any quiet question, that, that's it. Okay, let's see you Wednesday, so.